Hi friends, welcome back. Now it is time to see whether uh, Hamiltonian cycle problem is NP complete or not. So first of all, uh, if you look at the Hamiltonian cycle problem, it is of course an exponential time problem to solve it. But uh, somehow magically if the answer is known, then it just needs poly time to verify whether the given answer is right or wrong. Therefore, Hamiltonian problem is a NP problem and to prove that it is a NP complete or not so we need to verify whether a well-known NP complete problem can be reduced to Hamiltonian cycle problem or not in polynomial time so let's try to see whether a three set problem which is a well-known example for a NP class NP complete class can be reduced in polynomial time to Hamiltonian cycle problem or not. So for that let's take uh, this uh, three set problem where there are two clauses C1 and C2 and there are three literals X1, X2 and X3. So how to build a graph for uh, looking for the Hamiltonian cycle. So the graph built is uh, for every variable there will be a row of nodes and each row consists of uh, a pair of nodes for every clause. So there are uh, three, vari three variables or three literals x1, x2, x3 therefore there will be three rows of uh, nodes and there are two clauses therefore there need to be two pairs of nodes in each row. So 1 and 2 is for the clause 1 and 3 and 4 for class 2 for each of the three variables. So we have uh, clause 1 here and then we have uh, clause 2 here. Okay, another thing is the variable x1 is uh, true, then the path will be from left to right and if the x1 value is false, then the path will be from the right to left. So, if uh, you want to make sure that uh, x1 is uh, true, then follow the left to right path and if you want x2 to be false then follow from the right to left path and so on. Second thing is the same left to right, right to left has to be used for both C1 and C2 depending on in that C1 the whether clause is uh, that literal is uh, true or false say in the first case the uh, first uh, clause that is between 1 and 2 if you look at it then for x1 it is uh, uh, false that because we have x1 bar that means it should move from right to left therefore for x1 in the first one is it starts from 2 goes to c1 then back to 1. So 2 to c1, 2 to c1, c1 to 1 that is it is taking a right to left path so it is x1 bar. Next is x2, x2 means uh, it should take a left to right path so from 1 of x2 it goes to c1 and from c1 it comes back to 2. Same way 1 and 2 are for the C1 and uh, this third row is for X3 and X3 says that it is uh, X3 bar therefore it should be from 2 should go to C1 and from C1 it should come back to 1. So that's uh, what we did for C1. Now looking at C2 C2 is for 3 and 4, 
So it is x1, that means left to right. So it comes from 3. Sorry, let me change the color to the appropriate one. So from 3, it goes to C2. Then from C2, it goes to 4. Then second uh, literal is x2 bar. That means it should be the right to left. Therefore, from 4, it comes to C2. And from C2, it goes to 3 of x2 literal. And finally, for x3 liter, literal, it is x3. So left to right. So it should come from 3 and then go to 4. Done? Okay, can we identify any path which starts from S and go to T? And it should go both via C1 and C2. So let me try. So from S I can go to come to 1 of X1. Then from 1 of X1 I can't do anything. Then I can go to 2 of x1, then go to 3 of x1, then from 3 I can go down to c2 and then go to 4. Okay, so it is uh, 1 of x1, to 2 of x1, then 3 of x1, then c2, then 4 of x1. So we are now back here. Then uh, what else? Uh, we can go to 1 and then continue or we can go to 4 and then continue. So we need uh, 1 for uh, C1. C2 part is over. So one C1 is required. So if I want to include X2, then X2 we need uh, left to right path, not right to left path. Therefore, after 4, it is advisable to go to 1 of x2, then go 1 of x2, and from 1 of x2 you go to c1, then 2 of x2, and then continue with 3 of x2, then go to 4 of x2. Okay, we are now here. Now for x3, where can we go? So we can go to C2. No. So we can go to 4 and then 3, then 2, then 1, then back. So from 4 of X2, we can go to 4 of X3, then 4 of X3, uh, 3 of X3 then 2 of x3, then 1 of x3. From there, we can get to t, and from t, we can go back to s, from where we had come. Yeah, where the path is. Okay, let me look at that path. So, it starts from s, go to 1 of x1, then go to 2 of x1, then go to 3 of x1, then go to c2, then from there it goes back to 4 of x1, from 4 of x1 it goes to 1 of x2, then from 1 of x2 it goes to c1, then from C1 it comes back to 2 of X2. Then from there 3 of X2. Then 4 of X2. From there we go down to 4 of uh, X3. Then back to 4 of 3 of X3. Then back to 2 of X3. Then back to 1 of X3. And then we take this path, come to T. And finally get back to S. So this is the path we are taking.
So the final part is from S, yes, 1 of x1, 2 of x1, 3 of x1, then go to C2, then go to 4 of x1 back, then after that go to 1 of x2, then go to C1, then back to 2 of x2, then 3 of x2, then 4 of x2. After that, C1, C2, anyway, once we have gone through, therefore, no need to go again either to C1 or C2. So, we are now free to just move out and come. So, from uh, this one option is you go to 4 of uh, X3, 3 of X3, 2 of X3, 1 of X3, come out here. Or from 4 of X2, you can go to 1 of X3, 2 X3, 3 X3. 4x3 and come out like this. So that way you can find many options. But this is the path we have seen. So what is the path we have used for the hmm, Hamiltonian cycle we just found out. So for x1, it is moving uh, from 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to C, C to back 4. So it's totally forward journey, so which says that uh, x1 is true. Okay, then from 4 of x1, we came back to this, and then from here, we went to c1, back to this, so that's a forward journey, then to 2, then to 3, to 4. So that's a forward journey, so that makes x2 also equal to 1. After that, we came down to 4 of x3, then back, back 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 so it is taking a backward journey so it says 110 so one x1 is taking forward journey it is 1 x2 is taking forward journey it is 1 x3 is taking backward journey it is 0 so we have 110 as the answer for this one hamiltonian cycle we could identify by our knowledge and parallelly looking all of them therefore Finding this solution is definitely not a, a deterministic way of working because whatever I explained to you, uh, I cannot uh, write a code to do that in polynomial time. Therefore, I call it a non-deterministic way of working. So we got a solution in non-deterministic way and uh, we need to verify, yes, verified. So x1 it takes forward journey, x2 it takes forward journey, x3 it takes backward journey. Yes, we have a Hamiltonian cycle taking uh, in uh, all the nodes, all 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4 of first row, 1, 2, 3, 4 of second row, 1, 2, 3, 4 of third row, all are used and hence all the nodes are used in the path and it started from S and at T and back. So there is cycle and including S and T all four, one, all three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four are used. So hence it's a Hamiltonian cycle. Now the issue is, uh, will this satisfy our uh, uh, what do you call three set problem so x1 is uh, 1 therefore x1 bar will be 0 x2 is 1 therefore it is 1 x3 is 0 so x3 bar will be 1 x1 is 1 so this is 1 x2 is 1 so x2 bar is 0 x3 is 0 so we have a 0 so this 0 1 1 will get me a 1 and this 0, 1, 1 will also get me a 1. So this 1 and 1 is going to make it a 1. So that means x1 equal to 1, x2 equal to 1, x3 equal to 0 he is one of the solutions for our three-side problem. And we verified that, yes, it, it is indeed a correct solution. So this way, we realize that uh, the solutions obtained yeah of course not to forget in a non-deterministic way
for the Hamiltonian cycle problem. will be verified with three set problem in poly time and uh, another issue is uh, to build this graph how much time it is requiring of course it is poly time so the conversion from uh, this to this is done in poly time and uh, somehow we could find a solution of this and that solution when you put into the original problem yes it also satisfies so verified in three set problem therefore we can say that uh, three set can be reduced to Hamiltonian cycle problem in polynomial time so which means that uh, Hamiltonian cycle problem is indeed NP complete. So that's the proof for uh, this one. So that's the uh, simplest way of proving anything so convert a three set problem into the problem which you are uh, looking at and then finally prove that uh, solution somehow found for your problem can solve the three set problem if you can do that then you claim that uh, NP, it, your problem is also an np complete problem that's as simple as that friends uh, this is what uh, the proof for uh, Hamiltonian cycle to be a NP complete problem. So that's it for now. See you soon for uh, many more such issues. So keep watching. Thank you.